TikTok, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. Your friendly neighborhood philosopher, David Wood. And with me now is the mighty apostate prophet, who's, uh, hey, hey, P, I've noticed, I've noticed uh, you've been hanging out with Christians so much that you're starting to get a few books in your background. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I also have books now in my background because I want to be, I want to be respected. I want to be, uh, you know, I, I want to be cool. That's why I also start putting books in my, and I don't read them. Like, who reads books? But I have them in my background, yeah. yeah. Makes you, uh, makes you, makes you look and feel smart. So everyone, everyone should do that. Yeah, I also added, them, added a mustache and I have adopted a new name, which is uh, Albert Paul. <laughs> The, uh, the great, the great, the, <laughs> it'd be funny to call you something generic, like the great scholar of books, Albert Paul, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the great professor of literology, <laughs> Albert Paul. <laughs> All right. Well, we are, we are here because, um, well, uh, Good Friday and Easter weekend are coming up here pretty soon. And hey, hey, hey Pete, I don't, I don't know if you have noticed this, but I noticed this. We, we, we've, we've talked in the past about how things change in the Muslim community over time, right? Like it's hard to have a discussion and show a Muslim what the Quran says about the Bible and have him change his mind right there. It, 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 it seems to. Or, or just to give examples, like if you go back 15 years, if you go back 15 years ago and, and told Muslims, hey, uh, there's a death penalty for uh, apostasy in Islam, almost every Western Muslim you saw would say, no, that's that's complete. Come on. This, that, that, that's ridiculous. It doesn't teach that. It was just talking about in battle. If someone leaves Islam in battle and goes and joins the other side and then comes and attacks you, that's all it, that's all it means. And then you wonder, hey, well, it doesn't say any of that. That's not what it's saying. It says if anyone leaves his Islamic religion, kill him. That's kind of clear. No, no, no. What he really means is uh, same thing with Aisha, same thing with all kinds of things. Whereas now it's it's very common for Muslims to admit that uh, Muhammad uh, was with, you know, a little girl. Um, now it's very common for them to admit that, yes, there's a death penalty for apostasy. So so the change does happen. It just seems to take 10 or 15 years to get people to change their minds. But anyway, well, the, the reason I pointed that pointed that out was obviously through, you know, you go back 15 years when we would talk about the crucifixion of Jesus in the Quran, uh, you'd get pretty much every Muslim you'd run into would say, of, no, of course, Jesus wasn't crucified. And they would give you some version of substitution theory. Whereas now, just like, I don't know, like two weeks ago or something like that, I posted three Quran verses every Christian should know. And one of them was about uh, Surah 4, verse 157. And I had a lot of Muslims saying, that's not what that verse means. That verse isn't denying the crucifixion. Here's what it really means. And it was just interesting that now it's like, uh, now it's becoming acceptable to question what that verse is actually saying. And so it's just interesting that we could actually be right now smack in the middle of the time when the Islamic view changes from what it's been for the vast majority of Muslims over 14 centuries to a much, 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 much better uh, view. So we'll go ahead and read the verse here in a second. But let me go ahead and ask you, AP, because you are from some weird sect of Islam. Uh, and there, there, there are different positions within Islam. You have the dominant position, but there's always been a minority, uh, a minority view of uh, four one fifty seven. So, what did you believe about about uh, what the Quran says about the crucifixion? Well, um, first off, I would like to argue that I wasn't in a in a very weird sect of Islam. I was still, uh, you, it was still... you were weird. Were were you <laughs> were you a Salafi? <laughs> no, I wasn't. Thank you, thank you. So you're in some <laughs> weird sect. All right, go ahead. So I was basically part of mainstream uh, Sunni Islam uh, of the the, the Maturidi school, which is one of the three most popular. Actually, Muslims usually ac accepted only two schools of theology, which is uh, Ashari and Maturidi. And the Salafi school wasn't and still isn't an accepted school among the mainstream Muslims, but it has since uh in this in the last century through some traditionalist revivalism become so popular to go with this extreme traditionalist understanding of Islam. But anyway, so I was part of uh, that 
Islam, and I was uh, I had a I had a Sufi, a mystical understanding of Islam, which Salafis, traditionalists consider absolutely absolutely terrible today. Uh, but in our view, and in my view back then, um, the view on Jesus wasn't too different. It was simply that uh, it was actually the same. It was that Jesus uh, was not crucified. That when the Quran says um, that the Quran that the Quran says they did not crucify him or they did not kill him, but somebody else was made to look like him. So we believed that somebody else was killed in his place, somebody who de who deserved to die. And um, it was most commonly believed in our circles that uh, it was actually um, the person who betrayed him, so Judas, who was killed in his place uh, on that day. But that was a, that was a a traditional belief that is. Uh, entirely baseless and doesn't actually have any 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 foundation in um in in fundamental islamic sources but yeah so the idea was the same they thought they crucified jesus but they actually killed somebody else and allah then raised jesus who is a mere prophet to himself uh to heaven and later one day he will come back and he will uh, fight for allah and kill the pigs and uh you know things like that and break the cross, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Dumb bunch of dumb pigs. Yeah. 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 Stupid um, pigs. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and read this verse. Uh, and guys, this will—if you're not familiar with what Islam teaches and some of the problems with it, this would be this is going to be a good introduction. We're going to go ahead and watch the uh, short clip where um, Sheikh Imran Sheikh Imran Hossein uh, criticizes the standard Islamic narrative he's he thinks there are some holes in the narrative and just keep in mind there there have always been muslims who believe there are holes in this uh in this narrative i mean like educated muslim uh muslim commentators and so on um and even even ap what, what you just mentioned that um that you your group believed that someone was punished in jesus place but it was someone deserving you 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 have these uh you have a couple of categories of understanding, sort of four verse one fifty seven. You have you have there, there's always been a minority of Muslims who don't believe that this is actually denying Jesus crucifixion. It's saying something else, and we'll we'll look at what that is here uh, in a few minutes. Um, but uh, even even for those who held substitution theory, so you have that. Then you have um, what you might call theistic swoon theory or theistic apparent death theory, where someone was, where Jesus was nailed to a cross, but he survived it. He didn't actually die from uh, the crucifixion. Uh, that That is usually associated with uh, Ahmadis. Uh, but then even for those who appeal to substitution theory, namely someone else was crucified in Jesus' place and Allah miraculously disguised the person, you'll have, uh, you'll have two variations in the commentaries. One is the the volunteer system where they're coming to get jesus and jesus actually asks for a volunteer he says ah, all right guys who wants to be crucified in my place i guarantee you paradise if you get crucified in my place I'm not i'm not joking this is this is in their commentaries this is one main version of this story uh jesus doesn't want to be crucified so he guarantees one of his followers paradise if they agree for god to uh to miraculously transform them to make them look like jesus so jesus is scared of being crucified he takes a volunteer. Someone volunteers. What? Paradise? Oh, sign me up. So someone else gets crucified in this place. Somebody all, has to die. Yeah, yeah it's all vol it's all voluntary. Um, and and then and then of course you have the uh, divine punishment version. But even there are even differences there. There there are the passages. There are the tafsir that say there was Judas. There there uh, there are other commentators who say that it was a guard who was assigned to guard Jesus during his trial, but the guy was like spitting on him and beating him, and therefore Allah changed him. He like switched their looks, so that then they ah let's get this Jesus guy. He's like wait, I'm a guard. What are you talking about? I'm the guard. And they're like shut up, liar. You're Jesus, and they crucified him. So you have all these variations, and what, what the, the most startling thing you find is just they seem to freely the commentators seem to be freely making this stuff up as they go along. Uh, or they're dealing with sources that we're not familiar with, but there there is just not a one coherent uh, story, whereas Muslims think there is. And, and it's the, the point here is, if you go to ten different commentaries and they give you ten different interpretations of that verse, 
you should probably be open to the idea that that verse is open to interpretation, right? That, that, that's all I'm saying. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and check out this verse. Sort of four, verse 157. Uh, here are a couple different translations. So Pickthal, and because of their saying, we slew the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, Allah's messenger, they slew him not, nor crucify him, but it appeared so unto them. And lo, those who disagree concerning it are in doubt thereof. They have no knowledge thereof, save pursuit of a conjecture. They slew him not for certain. And uh, we could read a bunch of these, but you, you get the point. I'll just read the Yusuf Ali as well. That they said in boast, they here, and now I'll just add what this is talking about, that they said in boast, this is talking about Jews who, according to the Quran, were bragging about killing the Messiah. Very strange. I've never heard. Uh, uh, there are there are plenty of Jews who don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. It's very odd to think that, that Jews were bragging about killing the Messiah, but that's what the Quran says here. So, at, 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 you know, best case scenario, you could say that they're... Uh, that they're mocking or something like that. That they said in boast, we killed Christ Jesus. So Christ there is Messiah, Messiah Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of God. So they're, they're calling him the Christ and the apostle of God. But they killed him not, nor crucified him, but so it was made to appear to them. And those who differ therein are full of doubts with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow. For of a surety, they killed him not. And the next verse goes on to say that uh, Allah raised him uh, raised him up, raised him to himself. So lots of puzzling features of this. And you can go to the commentaries and the commentators have dis have differed on basically everything in this verse, almost like every phrase of this verse, there have been different understandings. So, so for instance, just to give you an example, we killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of Allah. Um, the, you go to the Muslim commentaries and they disagree about who is calling Jesus the apostle of Allah. So is that the Jew? Like here in Yusuf Ali, they've got quotation marks around it as if this is one quotation from the Jews who are bragging about killing the Messiah. Um, whereas you have you have other Muslims who say, no, what the Jews said is we killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary. And then Allah says he's the apostle of Allah. So you have you have disagreements about almost everything on there. The, the main point of contention, the main points of contention are what does this mean by they killed him not nor crucified him? And then the other is uh, wh what does this mean? Uh, but so it was made to appear to them. What does that mean? Because that's where substitution theory is being inserted. That when the Quran says it was made to appear to them like this, that that means that Allah took someone else, miraculously disguised him, and uh, made him look like Jesus, and therefore all of uh, all beliefs about Jesus being crucified are based on Allah being this uh, epic cosmic trickster. He did a he did such an amazing job tricking everyone that now the vast majority of people who've who've ever lived and heard about Jesus believe that he was crucified, even though he wasn't. So uh, anyway, the question is, what is this actually saying? And if I'll say this, if you just read this verse, if you just read 4, 157, it really looks like the Quran is denying the crucifixion of Jesus. But as we're going to see, things aren't that clear. They're a bit more unclear than I just let on. But uh, AP, um, you've... Uh, you've... Uh, You've looked into this for a while. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, so you understand that, that, that the, the standard Islamic narrative, the standard Islamic narrative looks kind of familiar, right? The, 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 the common Muslim stories that we hear about this seem kind of familiar, as if we can go back and look, as if we can go back and look and find places where this standard Islamic narrative was taken from. So what what are your uh what have you found? Because you've interviewed Bart Ehrman on this and so on. And so what 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 have you found? It's it's a topic that I really um that I have been really interested in for quite a while that I found fascinating because you see how Islam took influence from um different 
uh, religious groups and myths and uh, you know stories that people told about uh, different figures, including here about uh, Jesus. But I want to quickly add, uh, say one thing before before we move to that, which is, um, I I thought when I read the Quran, and even before I fully read the Quran, when I saw these these verses because they were brought up to me quite often as I was growing up. Um, I always thought this is a, um, I always got this vibe from these, from that specific verse that, um, that I get from the Quran every single time that it talks about Jews, which is this, um, this depiction of Jews as these, as this, uh, these, these very, you know, knowingly wild, you know, terrible, evil people and always mentioned as Jews, not as specific people, but as Jews, who in this case say, uh, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. Uh, you know? <laughs> and um, so you, you have two options here. Either uh, they know that Jesus is actually um, a prophet or a messenger or a messiah or whatever it is, and they uh, kill him and they are proud of that and they mock him. You know, they're proud of that. Or they uh, mockingly, they don't believe it, but they 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 mockingly uh, seeing all the things that he does allegedly, all the miracles and things that he does. They mockingly go there and uh, and just totally brag about it, and like, ha ha, we killed your guy, we killed the Messiah, we killed the messenger of God, and it is put in such a way that that you get this same idea, the same idea about uh, the attitude of Jews as you always get whenever an Islamic source mentions the Jews that they are, um, you know terrible people who are just who just uh, want to be here and fight Allah and do evil things to you and every time I see this verse I just think of the same thing but anyway uh, coming to where this actually comes from um, so I talked to Bart Ehrman uh, twice about these topics and I looked into it myself I read, read um, quite a few sources on this and um, so you mentioned that the the belief that Jesus was not really crucified, but that somebody else was crucified instead of him, existed in uh, you know throughout throughout history, throughout Christian history or related history. Um, what we actually have is that there are several several sources, several um, groups that are Christian or influenced by Christianity that held the belief that Jesus wasn't crucified, and. Um, among those, you have the Docetic ideas uh, or Docetic ideas, which believe that Jesus had a uh, a divine nature, which is why it is not possible for him to be crucified. So th those people thought um, that might be a Gnostic people, Gnostic Christians or Gnostic religious groups, those people thought that uh, that somebody was crucified on that day, but that it wasn't really Jesus. So, um, and the ideas there are, it was possible that a, a human body which represents Jesus was crucified, but it wasn't really Jesus himself because Jesus himself cannot suffer. So there was only a, a body that uh, as soon as it felt pain had nothing to do with Jesus anymore because uh, the bodily, because the human body is filthy and Jesus is completely free from being filthy. So he was separated and he was not crucified. The other idea is that um, <clears throat> he was not crucified, but somebody else was placed uh, there by him or by others and crucified in his name that he planned this or um, that it that it just so happened for somebody else to be crucified. There are lots of ideas. Uh, Bart Ehrman mentioned uh, some sources. For example, um, one source is the Gospel of Basilides, uh, where you find a source where it says um, about Jesus, about the crucifixion, he himself did not suffer. Rather, a certain Simon of Cyrene was compelled to carry his cross for him. It was he who was ignorantly and erroneously crucified, being transfigured by him so that he might be thought to be Jesus. And according to that source, Jesus also stood by and was like, um, you know, he wasn't seen. But that guy appeared like Jesus and, and Jesus just stood, stood there and, and laughed or smiled. Right? <laughs> Which oh. <laughs> they, they should have had it even better been like, yeah, yeah, get him. Get, <laughs> get get that Jesus guy. Get him, yes. Yeah, I'll, I'm guy. just going to go over get here cuz I'm I'm someone else. I'm someone <laughs> else here, ladies and gentlemen. It's not me. Not me. I am not Jesus. I'm just Wasn't watching. Me. That is clearly Jesus. <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> um 
So this is known as substitution hypothesis. It also, it's also found in uh, different Gnostic sources discovered among the Nahumadi library uh, that mentioned similar reports where Jesus is not crucified, but somebody else is killed instead of him. And um, yes, yeah, some of those are, for example, uh, Book of Thomas, the Contender, and the Second Treatise of uh, Great Seth. Uh, but uh, here is the thing. I talked with Bart Ehrman about, about this and um, where these reports actually come from and um, what their authenticity is. And he himself, you know, as somebody who doesn't believe in, uh, in any of it, um, says that um, the idea that Jesus wasn't crucified, that somebody else was killed instead of him, is an idea that came into existence later as Christianity developed and was orally transmitted to people. And it is something that has no basis in reality. It's completely made up. It is a, uh, a fiction created by different people in order to somehow explain their beliefs because they believe, okay, Jesus is uh, completely divine. So how can this divine figure suffer? How can this divine figure bleed or die? You know, um, they don't agree with the whole uh, Trinitarian explanations to it so they come up with their own explanations and say well okay he didn't it was actually a human body and jesus himself was separated from that but the issue is they had those ideas because they thought jesus is divine because they thought jesus is uh is is more than human but now islam comes along many centuries later and adopts this idea which you only find in later heretical sources, that Jesus wasn't crucified, that somebody was crucified instead of him. And Islam strictly rejects this idea that Jesus was crucified, but it does so for no proper reason. You know, it adopts this, this story from people who believe in Jesus' divinity. It says, no, they think they crucified him, but, it, but they did not. It was actually somebody else. Okay, but why exactly? It doesn't make any sense. According to Islam, Jesus was just a prophet, just a regular human. He could have been killed. He could have been crucified. But Muslims uh, with the Quran adopted this story without knowing why they adopted it. The story is put in such a way because of the divinity of Jesus. And you can also find um, you know, related stuff like this in the Quran, where uh, the Quran also adopts um, some stories about Jesus from those sources again, uh, like from the infancy gospels, for example, it adopts stories like that Jesus uh, had you know, turned um, clay birds into actual birds, blew life into them and made them fly away. Like this is a story that you find in the Quran. But when you think more deeply about it, it doesn't really make sense because this this story is found in infancy gospels uh, as part of the idea that Jesus is God, that he can give life to inanimate beings, which is why he, as the God that he is, blows life into clay birds and makes them fly away. But, so, but Islam somehow gets this story through folk influences and adopts it into Islam while also claiming that only Allah himself can you know, give life. But then you have, you have a story in uh, in the Quran in which it explains that Jesus actually turned clay things into you know in, into real birds and make and made them fly. But why? It doesn't make mm -hmm. sense, right? Anyway, mm -hmm. so lots of ex uh, examples to that are found in the Quran where it shows that the Quran, in a corrupted, ignorant way, adopted these ideas. Yeah, and uh, and and you you've you've pointed you've pointed out the the great irony in all of this that so you you go back to the first century and christians had this this idea of the the incarnation that god entered creation as jesus of nazareth and to that that the the eternal divine word entered creation takes on human flesh and now you have something that is simultaneously god and man simultaneously has two natures there are two directions there are two heretical directions you can go from that. You could claim that he's just a mere human being, uh, or you could claim that he's just divine, and then you could you could avoid the the uh, the idea of the incarnation. Um, and then so th this this is the great irony <laughs> that the people who said Jesus was only divine then needed to explain how he could be crucified, and so they came up with these explanations. But then we find Muslims adopting the exact same explanation when that the, the explanations were based on the idea that Jesus is only divine. He, he's not a, he's not a physically physical human. And Muslims take the exact same explanations and then say, aha, you see, 
And and even to this day, when I challenge Muslims where this idea is coming from, or to defend what the Quran says, they'll 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 start sending me to these these you know second and third century gospels, Gnostic gospels, and so on. Say, see, it says he didn't die. It's like, are, are you paying attention to what? Why? Why he he didn't die according to this? Because it completely contradicts your uh, your religion. Um, so anyway. Uh, the, the 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 real question here, because it, it's it's obvious, it's obvious that the standard Islamic narrative of substitution theory is being uh, is being plagiarized from earlier heretical Christian sources that, under no circumstances, can be interpreted as Islamic. Um, and so the question, the real question for for Muslims is. Uh, is this happening? Is this plagiarism happening at the level of the Quran or is it happening at the level of the commentary later on? Um, and, uh, because I, I, I will say the Quran verse is very, very vague. It doesn't say anything about God taking Judas and disguising Judas or something like that. It just says it appeared so to the Jews. And it doesn't say what. It's just appeared to them as if they're crucifying and, and killing Jesus and getting a victory over Jesus. Doesn't add all those other details. Those come from commentary. Those come from commentators who are trying to explain what the Quran is saying. Um, so, in other words, if this is what the Quran is actually saying, if the Quran is advocating this substitution theory about Jesus, then this was obviously plagiarized from earlier sources. If the Quran isn't saying that, but later Muslim commentators are saying it then the the influence is on the is at the level of the commentators not on not on the Quran so it wouldn't be a problem for the Quran if the Quran isn't actually saying that um so we're actually going to look at a, an example of a Muslim there have been many over the centuries you know, although it's it's always been a minority position um we're going to look at a video um, from Sheikh Imran Hossein who's going to give an alternative interpretation of what the Quran says here. And then uh, many Muslims are instantly going to reject that interpretation. We're going to take a, a little closer look at it. We're going to see he's he's actually got a point. I mean, from the perspective of Quranic interpretation, you can make a case that the Quran is not actually denying that Jesus was nailed to a cross. You can, you can, you can make that case. Uh, one quick uh, comment here. Uh, Leandra says, how do I convince a Muslim about the deity of Christ, uh, about the deity of Jesus as son of God, if he's giving me videos based on Dr. Zakir Naik saying that he isn't? Uh, Leandra, um, go to my go to my videos on it's on this channel. Uh, it's it's just titled Jesus, the son of God. Check that out, because I go through um, how Jesus is identified as the son of God by everyone who could possibly identify him as the son of God. So the father calls him the son of God. The spirit calls him the son of God. Jesus calls himself the son of God. Uh, the angel Gabriel calls him the son of God. Uh, John the Baptist calls him the son of God. His apostles call him the son of God. Men call him the son of God. Women call him the son of God. Even demons call him the son of God as he's casting them out. Um, so you have this unparalleled cloud of witnesses all identifying Jesus as the son of God. And then six centuries later, Muhammad comes along and goes, what? How can God have a son when he has no wife? And Muslims go, oh, great point. That's a great point. It's, yeah, it's a great point if you have no clue what anyone is saying, right? If you're, if you're, if if your target audience is is completely ignorant, yes, that makes that makes sense that uh that you would be puzzled by the concept of of God having a son. Anyway, uh, I, I think that the that the best approach, uh, Leandra, is to just go through all the passages identifying Jesus as the Son of God, and then to use what we call the Islamic dilemma. You're you're pointing out that the Quran affirms our Bible, and I I would just stick with that. I would just do that over and over again until till your Muslim friend gets the point. Anyway, hope that uh hope that helps. And we can always. Oh, I want to add. It. I want to add something interesting uh, quickly. Um, so we, since we talked about these stories making it, uh, making their way from infancy gospels and uh, you know uh, Gnostic gospels into the Quran, um, there's a very interesting detail that I noticed when I read uh, through the infancy gospel of Thomas, uh, which is um, so after listing a lot of things that Jesus does throughout his life, it says at some point um, that. It was said that this child was uh, either God or an angel of God, for every word of his is a certain fact. Um, and the point that it makes and that it emphasizes there is, uh, you know, all of the things that you have just read about about Jesus, people were so, uh, you know, speechless that uh, nobody expects these things to be done by a regular human. So they think this this must be something you know, above human nature, it must be God or 
something in between, which was, by the way, also an idea that some Christian, uh, some Christian heretical movements movements had. Mm -hmm. So you know, these sources point that out that people in that time, back then, thought, okay, this this has to be God or something like God, but then Muslims come come along and think, no, 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 this is this, you know. No, you know, he did give life and he did do all of these things and and all of that. But no, totally regular prophet, you know, just like any other. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it weird? I mean, like it, it would have been very easy to just deny all the stuff about about Jesus. But they keep the, the virgin birth. They keep all these miracles, including raising the dead. Uh, they in, they keep that that he's the Messiah. They keep that he's going to return to judge. They, they, they keep all this stuff. They, and, and then things calling him, you know, the word of Allah and a spirit from Allah. They're taking all these things, which in a, there was a reason for those things in the Christian context. Namely, he's the God man. He's the incarnate. He's the, the incarnate word. And then Islam denies that. Islam denies that he's the incarnate word, but then keeps all the all the other things, which then make no sense if he's just a regular guy. Why is he so obviously special in all of these ways? Um, and Islam just has no explanation. Just, yeah, eh, Allah knows. Allah knows. Um, all right. So uh, I, as an initial problem, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to go through, the, uh, go through the, the video from Sheikh Imran Hossein. I did want to point out one, one point here before we get started that will help people start to understand why there can be other interpretations of this verse. And that is, uh, again, as I pointed out, if you just read Surah 4, verse 157, let me go ahead and pull it up, and then I'll, I'll, I'll give you an idea of why initially there should be some reason to at least realize that you need to take a closer look at this before you jump to conclusions. Oops. Let's see. Where is my Quran? All right, here we go. This should work now. All right. So this is Surah 4. We go down to 157. So 157, they said in boast, we killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of, of the apostle of God, but they killed him not nor crucified him. Again, if you just read that and ignore everything else in the Quran and the immediate context, that seems pretty clear. That seems pretty clear. They killed him not nor crucified him. But if you look at the surrounding context, and then we'll go to the larger Quranic context uh, later as, as we uh, go through uh, Sheikh Imran Hossein's comments. But uh, if you just look at the immediate context, the immediate context is the Quran is not responding to Christian beliefs here. The Quran, get that, get that, get your minds around that. The Quran in this passage of the Quran is not addressing Christian beliefs. It is not responding to Christian beliefs. The Quran here, in context, is responding to examples of Jewish blasphemies, according to Islam. So the Jews are demonstrating that they are unbelievers in certain ways in this passage, and the Quran is responding to them. So there are all these things that uh, that that the Quran is condemning Jews for. So you look at, you know, verse 44, their covenant we raised over them and so on. And then Allah gave them uh, orders, transgress not in the matter of the Sabbath and so on. Uh, but they keep breaking their agreements and so on. So notice verse 155 here, uh, in that they broke their covenant. Uh, they rejected the signs of God. They slew the apostle in defiance of right. Then they said, our hearts are the wrappings, blah, 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 blah. Um, verse 156, they rejected faith. And they uttered against Mary a grave false charge. So accusing her of uh, committing adultery or something like that. And then in addition to all of this, so the, the Quran throughout this passage is responding to Jews who are, claim, who are uh, committing various kinds of blasphemies or they're demonstrating their unbelief. And here in 157, then the Jews say, we killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of God. But notice in identifying him as the Messiah, it looks like they're bragging that they thwarted Allah, right? Ha ha, we overpowered Allah by overpowering his apostle or his messenger. We got the victory by killing him and crucifying him. 
Once you understand what the Quran is talking about in this passage, namely that it's not resp it's not trying to correct Christian belief here, it's trying to correct the claims of Jews who are claiming that they had they have they are winning these victories over Allah. Then the question you should be asking is, I mean, obviously before again before trying to understand what it's saying. It should clue you into the idea, maybe we need to understand this, because just in theory, based on based on the passage, this could, A, be correcting Christian beliefs, because Christians think that Jesus was crucified and the Quran is somehow jumping in there and correcting them. Or it could be correcting Jews who believed that they had crucified him, but it's saying, no, actually you didn't, because Allah replaced him with someone else. Could be saying that. Or what the Quran is actually correcting here is their belief that they had won a victory, that they had overpowered a, a, a prophet of God and gotten a victory over God, that the Quran here is actually saying, no, you think you got him through this crucifixion. You think you did, but you actually didn't. Because, and this would be the idea, because notice, if you're looking at this, it says, well, they did. They, it says they didn't kill him. They didn't crucify him. Yeah. And the idea, the possible interpretation, the, the possible alternative interpretation is, wait a minute, in Islam, they believe in a soul. They believe in a soul that survives. So you thinking you got victory over Jesus is just silly because you're not, you're not killing and crucifying his soul. You might do something to his body and so on, but that's not really killing and crucifying him and giving you the victory. Instead, Allah just made made it look like you got the victory. It was made to appear to you as if you got this victory. But Allah simply raised Jesus up. So Jesus is still around and he's going to come back. He's going to he's going to return to judge you because he's been raised. So those are possible interpretations. But anyway, the, the, the point there of what I was just saying is once you understand the context that the verse isn't in a, in a passage that is correcting Christian beliefs. Instead, it is a passage that is correcting Jewish claims. Then you might want to start wondering what this verse is actually saying. And uh, we're going to look at some clips of, uh, we're going to look at a clip from Sheikh Imran Hossein, where he's actually pointing out, he, he, he obviously thinks the standard Muslim interpretation is completely silly and blasphemous. He believes it is, it is one massive insult to Allah. And I have to say, I agree with him as, insofar as that. So the question is whether the Islamic view is actually insulting God because that is the actual Islamic view, or if the later interpretation of the uh, commentators is what's actually uh, blasphemous and insulting here. Uh, any, any, uh, any, uh, anything you want to jump in with, AP, before we check out this clip? Nope, perfectly summed it up. Let's let's look at it. All right, so here we have actual. Awesome Muslim commentator breaking this down for us. Wait a minute. We got all these super chats here. People are making it rain. People are making it rain. So we have a uh, desert empire here says in the Bible, Jesus was crucified for blasphemy by the Jews and Romans. According to Islam, Jesus was just a prophet and preached Islam. So what was the reason for his crucifixion in Islam? Uh, yeah, you'd, you'd have to say it. You can understand why Jesus of the Bible uh, really upset a lot of people. Um, but yeah, it, the, the Jesus you read about in the Quran is some guy going around saying, everyone believe in God. Everyone believe in one God, just one God, to which every Jew that existed would have said, amen. What, 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 who are you talking to here? You go talk, go tell the Romans that they're the dumb ones. We, we already, we already know this, right? Instead, the Quran says Jesus is going around. He's, hey, everyone, believe in God. And everyone's, oh, how dare you? We'll kill how you for this. How dare you? We'll kill you. You're finished. <laughs> You're finished. Right? It doesn't and, make sense. It's so dumb. No, that's, that's, what I, <laughs> that's what I mean. Uh, so it, 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 in, in their defense, they would have to say something like, you know, Jesus was stepping on the toes of the hypocrites or something like that. And they wanted to, uh, mm -hmm. they wanted to kill him. But again, it is interesting that in the Quran, they're bragging about killing the Messiah. So it seems to, it seems to be a, a deeper a deeper spiritual problem. And then uh, Hyperdoc said, um, oh, he's going into uh, uh, the Greek and Latin persona. Person, what is a person patristically? Uh, Orthodox liturgy uses singular pronouns, the, in reference to the Trinity. Um, yeah, you might, you, you might, you might want to talk about that. We, we could, we could get some, uh, we can get some discussions of theology on here, but yeah, we're, we're going to stick to this uh, topic of the crucifixion here. All right, we have uh, Sheikh Imran 
Hossein, Muslim scholar. He, he's known as a, he's known as a specialist as a specialist Muslim scholar of like end times things and so on. And so uh, he focuses a lot on Jesus because Jesus, according to Islam, plays a significant role in the end times. But uh, you, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. check this out. When they saw him die on the cross, they were convinced he could not have been the Messiah. And and so just just note, it's he's talking about understanding what the Quran is saying. So they're thinking, aha, he can't be what uh, what he was claiming to be because he's been crucified. And so it looks like he's going to go in the direction of saying that that's what the Quran is responding to. What they did not know was that Allah made it appear to them that he was crucified. What's the definition of crucifixion? It is that you should die by hanging on the cross. What? This is uh, this is actually very important to everything else he's saying. And if you miss this, you won't understand his actual position. But he's defining crucifixion and death in a specific way. I don't think I don't think what he's saying here is actually necessary for understanding what the Quran says uh, in an alternative way. But uh, his his definitions here, they're going to be to say that someone was crucified is to say that he died by being nailed to a cross. That's not what that's not how most people use crucifixion. That's not what crucifixion is in the Bible. Uh, crucifixion just means nailing someone to a cross or even it could be tying someone to a cross, but you're putting someone on a cross. That's what crucifixion is. And then almost everyone dies from that. I, I know of one example of someone who didn't die uh, from crucifixion. That's where they actually tr tried to take the guy down and save him. Um, so uh, he's saying crucifixion means cru means you die by being put on the cross. And then he's going to ask what death is. And he says, death is when Allah takes your soul, but doesn't return it. So then you're dead. It, it's only when Allah doesn't restore your soul. But he believes Allah can take your soul away from your body. Allah can take your soul away so that your body's there and has no soul, in which case it's, it's biologically dead. But then Allah can return that soul. Um, and then you're raised up. And so... Based on these definitions, he can read the Quran. He can read the Quran literally, but using these definitions of, cruci of crucified and dead. So they killed him not means um, they didn't kill him in a way that Allah took away his soul and didn't return it. And they didn't crucify him means they didn't, he didn't die by crucifixion because since Allah returned his soul and raised him up, therefore he wasn't, uh, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't crucified. Now you don't have to go down that road. You could just say, because there have been Muslims who are just thinking in terms of the soul of Jesus. Like you didn't actually crucify him in Islam. You continue to live on. So you, you, you can't kill someone like that. Um, so, but anyway, that's what he's, that's what he, uh, that, that's the direction he's going. Any thoughts on this AP? I want to add something very quick, which is um, something interesting that he says, which you may not clearly understand when if you don't uh, understand the Islamic way of thinking about sleeping and dying. In Islam, according to Islam, according to the Quran, when you go to sleep, Allah takes your soul and you get your soul back when you wake up. And Weird. if you don't get your soul back, then you are... You are you are dead. So there, these are these are the two the two deaths. You die when you go to sleep, and you wake up when you 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 come back to life and get your soul back when you wake up, and you die when you really die, and your soul is not given back by Allah. That's interesting. I, I also find it fine that he sounds like the Islamic Osho. Do you know who Osho is? No, who's that? <laughs> some 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 preacher some. Uh, you know who that guy is? Oh, Osho. that guy, that guy, the uh, uh, Indian guy, right? Is he? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that yeah. guy's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that guy's hilarious. No, I, I actually like this guy. I mean, at first it sounds weird and stuff like this, but when he starts going, "Let me warn you," I was like, ah, "That guy, this guy's kind of cool." <laughs> yeah. 
All right, shake and run. Here we go. Now he's going to break down what what death means. But guys, just make sure you understand these two concepts uh, that he's going to use, or the rest of what he says does not make sense. And if you miss it when you're watching this, then later on you won't understand what what he's saying. So, crucifixion means you die by being put on the cross, and die means Allah did not did not return your soul. And so you you need those because those are the way the, those are the the meanings that he's going to use in the Quran to reject the standard Islamic narrative. On the cross, what is the definition of death? Answer: The definition of death is that Allah should send the angel to take the soul and not return it. Allah sends an angel to take the soul and doesn't return it. So if the soul was returned, you didn't die in the Islamic sense that he is referring to here. And so you put those together, you've got his basic understanding. Uh, was Jesus put on a cross? Yes. Um, did he die by that? Well, m maybe in the sense most of us would use, but not in the special Islamic sense that he's talking about here, where death means Allah did not re did not restore your soul to you. And so he's going to interpret it in light of that. Uh, anything, AP, before I uh, continue this clip? I, I find it too comedic the way he talks and the, the gaps he could leaves be it, behind. Could, could, Stop being so judgmental. I mean, you have it's this, just funny to me. I don't know. No, you're sitting here laughing at people when you got this weird hybrid German Turkish thing going on. And you're making fun of this guy. I'm not making fun. It's just it's just always funny to me to listen to these these kind of speeches. Like, what is death? <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but but it's funny because he'll he'll like pause for like five seconds yeah, between yeah. between phrases, and then when I made my video, I didn't want it to be super long, so I cut out the pauses, and then Muslims are like, ah, you edited what he said to make it sound like same, he was denying the crucifixion. Yeah, same. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting stuff. Is there anyone who differs with me? Uh, a bunch of people, but all Muslims. The definition of death is that Allah should take the soul and not return it. Can Allah take a soul and return it? Tell the schoolboy, go back and study the Quran. Hey, schoolboy. <laughs> I like that. He says, uh, can Allah take a soul and not return it? Or can Allah take a soul and return it? Tell the schoolboy to go back. And but I, I, I like that. Hey, schoolboy, go not you go back and read the Quran and see what death really is. Huh? Schoolboy. Yeah. I'm going to start using that. Listen, schoolboy. Right. He's making a reference to a certain Quran verse that um, is, yeah, I will look it up in a, in a little bit. Yeah, we're, we're, we're actually going to pull up some relevant Quran verses because, mm -hmm. uh, guys, I, I, want, I want to be clear here. Um, I, I like being able to point, point this out as a problem for Islam, Surah 4, verse 157, that Islam is portraying Allah as this cosmic deceiver who starts false religions for no reason, tricks and deceives even the people who follow <laughs> his prophets, because keep in mind, Jesus followers ultimately concluded that he was crucified where they get that idea. According to the standard Islamic narrative, Allah tricked even them. And that's like horrifying. That is a horrifying thought that, that you've got this cosmic trickster who might trick you even when you're trying to follow his prophets, right? That's, that's, that should be a terrifying thought, especially for Muslims, because guess what? If Allah tricked and deceived the followers of Jesus for no reason, how do you know he's not tricking you? Right? How do you know he's not tricking the followers of Muhammad? If you, you trick the followers of Jesus, why not the followers of Muhammad? Um, so I, I like have, being able to point that out. But once you understand some of the issues, some of which the Sheikh is bringing up here, but also some other verses of the Quran, you start looking at, at 4.157 going, actually, I'm not sure that is supporting substitution theory. I, I think there are there is a significant amount of room for interpretation uh, of this verse. Uh, but let's go ahead and continue here. Cosmic okay. trickster sounds like uh, a new atheist channel that goes into making cosmic prank trickster. <laughs> <laughs> cosmic trickster. <laughs> Co uh, co cosmic cosmic skeptic should uh, come out yeah. with his uh, with his uh, his prank channel. Yeah, uh, cosmic uh, trickster. 
I want to make I want to bring up two Quran verses. Uh, so Quran chapter thirty nine verse forty two and chapter six verse sixty are probably the verses that he's referring to when he says, uh, "Go back and study the Quran." Uh, those say, "Allah takes the souls at the time of their death, and those that do not die uh, during their sleep." Uh, then he keeps those for which he has decreed death and releases the others for a specified term. Indeed, in that are signs for a people who give thought. Very strange, but that's yeah, that's what that's what he means. So Allah can take your soul and give it back to you, or take your soul and keep it, which means you are dead. And and that's that's why he was saying, Does anyone disagree with me? Yeah. Does anyone disagree with me? Because he's gonna hey, if you're if you're sticking to one interpretation of four one fifty seven, uh you got some you got some problems because you're gonna run into some problems with some other Quran verses. <laughs> yep. Someone put in the chat, uh cosmic knob fiddler. <laughs> Oh, that again. <laughs> That's wrong. I'll, I'll always get to that. Um, yeah, and, and guys, just, I mean, keep keep in mind, even if you don't have this verse, this is the main disturbing verse uh, when it comes to Allah deliberately deceiving people. There, there are others. And this was so troubling to the early Muslim community that Abu Bakr, the, Muhammad's closest companion, a man, a man who, who was one of a handful of people that Muhammad guaranteed would be in paradise. Abu Bakr got the guarantee that he would be in paradise from Muhammad himself. But Abu Bakr said, if I had one foot in paradise, I would still fear Allah's deception. In other words, I would think, hey, you know, I'm, oh, I'm stepping. Oh, look at it. Look at all the virgins. Look at all the wine. Look at all the little boys dancing. Oh, yeah, I'm about to step into paradise. And I've got one foot in there. I'm, I'm almost there. I'm so close. He said, I would still be worried that Allah's going to say, psych, ha, ha, you're going to hell. Ha, 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 ha. Right? Rug pulled. Yeah. yeah. So, guys, there there are consequences of your of your theological views, especially if you're viewing Allah as this cosmic trickster. So, I would say to Muslims, guys, if there is a serious alternative explanation of this that doesn't make that doesn't portray your God as like the Loki, basically. I mean, that's what he that's what Allah sounds like when you say things like this. He's like Loki, right? Remember, you, you know, Loki in the in, in the disguises himself in the movies and stuff can make him look like that. That's what that's what Allah sounds. Like. Ah, he's, but he's doing it to other people. Ah, I'll trick you. I'll make you look like this, and I'll make you look like that. Pretty creepy stuff. That's funny. I know. I never thought about that. Loki is actually in the in the Norse mythology thought to be the um a myth, the mischievous uh, yeah. brother among the gods who just does terrible things and can't be relied upon. Yeah. He's a he's a deceiver. And Allah could be compared to that in a sense. Hey, that's weird because if Allah is the God of mischief and the Quran says what you have to do to mischief makers, I don't know. Anyway, so. <laughs> here we go. So then what did Allah do to make it appear that he died? Let me warn you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and my language is sometimes very harsh because that's the only language some people can understand. Oh, hey, AP, hey, did you catch that? <laughs> he said, he said, let me warn you. Hang on, let's go back, because this is very important. Let me warn you. And my language is sometimes very harsh, because that's the only language some people can understand. Hey, AP, according to the Sheikh here, some people only understand harsh language. And therefore, you can't. we can't just go around being nice all the time. According to yeah. Sheikh Imran Hossein here, when you're dealing with people with some stupid ideas, you have to be very, you have to be very harsh. Yeah. Um, so just, just, just keep that, keep that in mind, AP. According to Sheikh Imran Hussein, it's okay for us to be harsh in our language when we're dealing with people who are making stupid claims. Yes, because absolutely. Because they, they might be the only thing they understand. Only thing. Okay, that's it. That's it. Well, I'm, I'm going to do that from now on. All right. Don't come with this nonsense. Because it is not only pathetic nonsense, it is absolutely sinful. To say that Allah, when I billah min hadha, Allah calls someone else to take the appearance of Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And that innocent man, innocent because he never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified. <laughs> he just called it, he just called the standard, most common Islamic view, pathetic nonsense or pathetic, pathetic nonsense. But uh, uh... If, if you, if you go around, um, among Muslims and ask them about whether Jesus was crucified or not, uh, the absolute majority, almost everybody will 
say no 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 jesus wasn't crucified it was actually it was somebody else that's what the quran says i mean those who know will say that you know so um and, and that's what the majority of scholars have said that's what all the traditional scholars say so and and he just said he just called it pathetic and he said that's sinful that's pathetic nonsense and you and and he's gonna he's gonna go on here but i mean he's got a point right like i mean listen listen guys think about what he's saying Guys, you're going to stand before Allah and say, Aha! Great job, Allah, tricking all these Christians into believing Jesus died on the cross by taking that other guy who didn't do what Jesus did and making sure he was crucified. Great job punishing someone else for, for Jesus. And, and notice, it, it, he... Uh, he, he actually explained, he calls it, he calls it, 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 it injustice, right? And he says that this other person was innocent. Obviously, Muslims are going to jump in. Ah, Ju Ju if it was Judas, he wasn't innocent. If it was the guard, it wasn't innocent. These guys aren't innocent. But he's saying he's innocent of what Jesus did, right? He's mm -hmm. innocent of the charges against Jesus. So you're saying Allah could just take someone else who did something else, disguise that person, make him look like Jesus, and have that guy punished for the sins of someone else or what are perceived as the sins of someone else. Um, that, that that person can be put in pl at a person's legal trial, you could take someone who's done something else, miraculously disguise him, then that other person gets punished and serves the sentence or gets executed or goes to prison or whatever it happens to be. Allah can do that. And he's saying, what are you talking about? Judas didn't do that. Judas, Jude, they weren't trying to get Judas. You're, you're, you're saying that Allah did this? So anyway, this is interesting stuff. That's, that's a very interesting perspective to look at it, uh, at it from uh, to say... Even if that person was guilty who died, he wasn't guilty of that of, of that of, of what Jesus was being mm -hmm. supposedly crucified for. And that really matters here because we are talking about justice. We're talking about the justice of Allah here. But it, it's funny, I mean it, it makes sense what he says. Uh, but the issue is um, I think I think in the end I would I would argue that he is the one who makes sense because the Quran doesn't make sense. And he's trying to make sense of it, but, it will, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it is. I mean, it is interesting that you can. Uh, he, he's, he, he regards this as like blasphemous nonsense to be attributing this sort of thing to Allah. But, but I mean, think about this, because the standard Islamic notice Muslims have a massive problem with the idea of Jesus dying for your sins. How can Jesus die for your sin? Okay, what's your explanation? Oh, well, Judas died for Jesus. Like, wait, what? I thought you guys had a... <laughs> and it was it was Allah. It was Allah doing it. Wait, so Allah made sure that someone else was punished in Jesus' place, but you you guys have a problem with substitutionary uh, atonement, right? So it's... Anyway, uh, it seems incoherent to me. Uh, quick comment here. One Way Apologetic says, uh, God bless David, and I'm still praying for you, AP. Let me oh, answer... You? Let me da yeah, answer on behalf of AP. Yes. How... <laughs> Hey, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. Shut up with your prayers. <laughs> Stupid Christian, stop it. <laughs> Just stop it. You're finished. Uh, you're finished, boy. Uh, uh, no, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, here we go. And... Wait for judgment day with that nonsense. <laughs> I actually like that he's... Like, I mean, he's he he obviously knows that this is the standard Islamic view, but he's saying he's you, mad. You wait, you wait for judgment day when you're going to stand before Allah saying, hey, great job tricking billions of people, Allah. You did such a great job starting Christianity because Christianity wouldn't have gotten off the ground without the belief that Jesus died on the cross. And so thank you, Allah, for for doing such a great job starting false religions and tricking people who follow your your prophets and so on and and for punishing someone else for what they thought Jesus did. Yeah, great job, Allah. And he's like, are you, you're seriously going to stand before Allah making those kinds of claims? Interesting. Allah is the best, uh, best prankster, best comedian. The best of there. pranksters. We should start Either. translating planners like that and say, the, since, it, since, since the, the actual word involves deception, we start saying the Allah is the best of pranksters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, don't let me forget that. Don't let me forget that. I always blurt things out that are worthy of, of videos or at least uh, something else at some point, And I always forget them. We should make a sketch where, where a Muslim dies and stands before Allah. And then he's like, Hey, you were my number <laughs> one prankster, favorite comedian. I tried to be as good, but I can't. <laughs> you tricked them all, Allah. You <laughs> tricked them all. You truly are the best of tricksters. <laughs>
<laughs> Pathetic nonsense. It's not there in the Quran. It's in your imagination. Nice. That's why it is. And yet it took the world of Islam by storm. What a brainwash Umar we are. Today. Oh my goodness. He just said, huh. wait, what? <laughs> what a, he just said, what a brainwashed Umar. He called, he called the And Umar yet it brain. took the world of Islam by storm. What a brainwash Umar we are today. Ouch. And what, what, dude, what, what's amazing is I made a video g going through this. <laughs> And I still got comments from Muslims over and over and over again. Oh, you're 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 misrepresenting what he's saying. He's not denying the he's not denying the the standard Islamic view. It's like how could he make it any more clear? He's 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 calling you brainwashed. I mean, it's a video where he's calling you brainwashed and shaming you for the idea that you're going to stand before Allah and believe in substitution. And then Muslims will go into the comment section and say he's not denying the standard Islamic view. It's like what like what does he have to say? What does he have to say <laughs> for you to realize he's got a problem with your view? This is so weird. All right, here we go. Well, then what happened? All right. Good well, question. then why don't you go to the Quran? Let the Quran explain rather than go on fancy flights of imagination. Fancy flights. You're going to tell Allah on Judgment Day you caused that man to assume the appearance of someone? That's what they're going to do. And he who never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified. That is an act of injustice. You attributing injustice to Allah? What foolishness. Pretty bad. Where are the scholars who will correct this foolishness? That, that, that is interesting. He's, he's saying, where are the scholars who will correct this foolishness? He understands that it's foolish. And guess what? There, there probably are more scholars who realize how foolish this is, but you can't say anything because you'll be targeted. You know, you'll be targeted like like you're a heretic for denying what the Quran, uh, what 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 the mainstream view of the Quran is. It's like it's like uh, it reminds me of Sheikh Yasser Qadi with the you know the whole holes in the narrative interview. Every okay. scholar, every scholar who knows the history of the Quran, who, know, who, who knows about the, the different kirat, who knows about the, the manuscript tradition, every last one of them knows that this idea that, you know, the Quran has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter is complete nonsense. Every last one of them knows that. And yet they can't say it. They can't say a word because they'll get eaten alive by the Ummah and, and ah, you're denying the perfect preservation of the Quran. This is heresy. And so they all have to keep their mouths shut. And so this guy's pointing out, it, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool that you could, you know, be all old and stuff like this and not have to worry about your future. Like, I look forward to that. Like, man, man you guys think I'm talking trash now? Imagine me at 70 or something like this. <laughs> like, you, there's nothing you could ever do to me again <laughs> because I don't care because I'm all old. <laughs> I'm all old and it hurts when I pee and things like that. And I don't care. <laughs> That's a good perspective, man. Listen, I, I love how angry he is. I love how really genuinely angry he is. And he's shaking as he's like... It's nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That like, like, I mean, think about this. It's, I mean, from his perspective, you've got, you've got the entire Ummah running around accusing Allah of being this, this divine, this divine deceiver, this divine trickster who, I mean, you don't know what to believe. You don't, you, if Allah can trick people for no reason into thinking that Jesus is crucified and even his followers can be tricked by this. I mean, how do you know anything that's going on right now? How do how, how do you know we're even live streaming right now and Allah's just not tricking you guys into thinking that D, D Wood and, and AP and Imran Hussein are all in this uh are, are are all in this live stream you're watching right now. And maybe Allah's tricking you about all of us and we're not here. Maybe I, maybe I'm uh maybe I'm in Antarctica right now and Allah's just tricking you into th you don't know what to believe if you believe in this cosmic trickster. He recognizes, guys, this is nonsense. And uh, it's shame on him, shame on you for saying this. It's, it's funny because uh, we talked about this quite often in the past. We made uh, live streams. We talked about the issue of um, of what it entails to believe that Allah actually made somebody else appear like Jesus. And, and we pointed out, you very often pointed out how people are actually basically uh, with a straight face, with, with belief, uh, saying that Allah has deceived people and thereby created a false religion which he complains in the quran and so this this is a huge problem and muslims should should look at themselves and realize this and he goes basically from the same angle here but just saying 
this is not what we believe. This is, we have been brainwashed. That's why we believe this, this is wrong. It's nonsense. That's not what the Quran says. So we, we are very much going from that same, very same idea that this is, this implies that Allah is a deceiver and he is unjust and Muslims have to change their view. <laughs> Uh, Hussein here says uh, link or title of the original video. Uh, Hussein, I, I I put that in the in the description box, so uh, you can. I think as I think the full lecture is uh, he goes into like end time stuff and so on with, a lot with Jesus, uh, but I think the full lecture is like an hour and fifteen minutes. Uh, but that's in the description box if you wanna if you wanna check that out. Uh, if you go to right. the description box, you you see the link. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's see this. That's why I have to be so forceful in my language. Let me warn you. Allah took his soul. Allah took his soul. They thought he was dead. Uh, see, now he's breaking it down very, <laughs> very simple on what happened. So Allah took his soul. Let me back up here because he gives a he gives a breakdown of his view. Allah took his soul. They thought he was dead. They, they thought he was dead in the full sense of his his soul not being returned, according to him. Allah took his soul. Mm hmm. They thought he was dead. They thought. They took down the body. Took down the body. So Jesus was on the cross. They put the body in the cave. Put the body in the cave. So he's buried. They sealed the cave. Sealed the cave. Allah returned the soul. Allah returned the soul. Resurrection. As simple as that. Simple as that. Nobody knew that the body, that the soul was returned. Nobody. Well, some people knew. His followers did. And Allah raised him. And Allah raised him. But let me warn you one more time. <laughs> In case you guys didn't understand me the first time when I warned you. Here it goes. We're almost done. It's only a few more seconds. If you stick with this theory of substitution, you are going to be in a pathetic state on Judgment Day. Let me warn you one more time. Uh -huh. This is a simple explanation from the Quran. Uh -huh. And so... He did not die. He didn't die. And you, you know what's funny? Because <laughs> I, 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 I went through this entire clip uh, in my video discussing this. And I actually got comments from Muslims. Look, he said right there in the end, oh, he didn't die. You see? <laughs> so he is sticking, he is sticking with the standard Islamic, uh, the standard Islamic picture. It's like, <laughs> how, did you watch anything, guys? <laughs> did you guys watch anything that, that this man dumb. just said? Um... So yeah, that what's he? Uh, what's the shake actually? What's he actually saying there? Um, what's he actually saying? It's um, it's it's pretty straightforward. He's when he says he didn't die again, he's going back to his original definitions that he applied. Death means Allah took away your soul but didn't return it, or he sent the angels to take your soul and didn't return it. If you Allah takes your soul when you're on the cross, uh, and then they put you, they bury you and so on. And then he returns your soul. You didn't actually die. You're not, you didn't actually die. Um, and so he says, that's what the Quran is actually saying here. Um, and you don't need, you don't need all of this stuff about God tricking and deceiving people for no reason into thinking that Jesus died. And I, I would, I would lay this down as a kind of rule. If you have multiple interpretations available to you, and one turns your God into the Islamic version of Loki, you should probably go with a different interpretation. But for some reason, our Muslim friends, nope, that's that's the only interpretation that is acceptable. If it doesn't involve Allah being a great deceiver, we do not want the that interpretation. That's so that's that's weird stuff, right? Here is the issue that I have with with this. Uh, when you look at the verse, um, chapter four, verse one hundred and fifty seven, and you go um, into the into the into the wording of the verse, um, you see that it explicitly says that they say they killed him. Uh, then it says in Arabic, uh, so they did not kill him, and um, so they did not crucify him. That's what it says here in the wording in Arabic in this verse. Mm -hmm. But it was made to appear to them so. Yeah, and th this this is where some of those other verses 
that are relevant actually come into play? Because I mentioned, I don't think you have to go exactly with what, with his, mm -hmm. with his ideas about all of this. But let me, uh, let me pull up a couple more verses here. Because again, same principle, it's it, the, the, the overarching principle, as far as I'm looking at this is, uh, as you just pointed out, if you're looking at the verse, the verse sounds like it's clearly denying mm -hmm. Jesus death and cruci and even his crucifixion, like he wasn't even crucified. So it's not just that he didn't die, it's that he wasn't nailed to a cross. Um, if you look at the, the surrounding context, start saying, okay, well, this isn't addressing Christian beliefs. This is addre addressing Jewish claims. And the Jewish claim was that they had somehow gotten victory over Jesus or something like that. And so could that be what the Quran is denying? And then once you look at some more Quran verses, then a couple other possibilities start start coming coming into, into focus. So let's go through a few here. Uh, this is the, the Shakir translation here of, uh, of several verses. But you have verses like 355, and when Allah said, O Isa, I'm going to terminate the period of your stay on earth and cause you to ascend unto me and purify you of those who disbelieve and make those who follow you above, uh, those who disbelieve to the day of resurrection. Um, I normally quote this to show that Allah is promising to protect the followers of Jesus until the day of resurrection, which, which doesn't make sense if you think the Apostle Paul came in there right afterwards and corrupted everything. <laughs> Uh, doesn't make sense if you ever, because notice Allah is going to protect them until the day of resurrection. That's a long time, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you, you could look at the beginning of this verse. I'm going to terminate the period of your stay on earth. You could find translation, which is, which translate this as, as you're going to die, right? Because that's that's the normal usage. But translators have to be have to take four 157 into account in their translations and and act like this isn't standard language for someone dying in in Islam. Uh, 3 145. And a soul will not die, but with the permission of Allah. Notice you have verses like that in the Quran. A soul will not die, but with the permission of Allah. And so notice if, if according to the Quran, nothing dies, a soul doesn't die, but with Allah's permission. Then when you say, ha ha, I, I thwarted Allah by killing Jesus. No, you didn't. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? This is part of Allah's plan. Look at 3169. Very important here. 3169. Reckon not those who are killed in Allah's way as dead. They are alive. Very important verse, ladies and gentlemen, for understanding. For, for, if you wanted to interpret 4157 in some light other than the standard Islamic narrative, Hey, if you're killed, if you're killed for a lot, which Jesus was, don't say that, don't say they're dead, they're alive. So did you actually, if you think you killed someone like Muhammad or Jesus or anyone, according to Islam, did you actually kill them? No, you didn't. They're alive. Um, 5, 117, uh, this is Jesus, this is Jesus talking. He says, uh, and I did not, uh, I did not say to them, uh, anything except what you did and join me. Serve Allah, my Lord and your Lord, and I was a witness of them so long as I was among them. But when thou didst cause me to die, thou wert the watcher over them, and thou art witness of all things. This is this is Jesus speaking to Allah. And notice there, there Jesus talks about dying. So a, a Muslim would have to interpret this in light of Surah 4, verse 157, and say, this is after Jesus returns. So Jesus was taken to uh, taken to Allah. Then he's going to return later, judge the world, die. And they would have to say, ah, that's what this death is talking about. It's talking about even after that. But if you if you just read this verse without thinking that 4.157 denies Jesus' death and crucifixion, this would just you would just think that this is talking about Jesus' death on the on the cross. And then, of course, another very important one, 817. This is talking about Muslims who kill people in battle. Look at what Allah says. You did not slay them, but it was Allah who slew them. Think about what he think about what he's saying there, because notice th these are people who go out. You you go out, you fight in the Battle of Badr, you kill a bunch of people, you chop some heads off, you slit some throats, and then you come back and say, "Hey, I killed I killed eleven people," and Allah's response is, "You did not. Allah actually killed them." you were a mere instrument that Allah was using to achieve what he wanted. 
Get your minds around this because just 817 by itself, let alone some of these other ones, just 817 by itself should start making you wonder what the Quran is saying. Because think, if you went and killed someone, you went and killed someone in battle, you killed 11 people, you come back, you brag about it. And Allah says, you didn't kill them. And you say, what, what are you talking about? Notice, is Allah saying the people weren't killed, that, that it didn't happen, that these people didn't die? No, he's saying he did it through you and that you are a mere instrument of his will. So anyway, the, the point is you have passages like this. You have verses like this where Allah says, you didn't kill them. I did. You didn't kill those guys. You didn't chop those heads off. I did. I simply used you. So if the if the Jews are saying, according to 4.157, if the Jews are saying, ha ha, we killed him, we crucified him. Well, think of that in light of verse, uh, in light of chapter eight, verse 17. You didn't do it. Allah's doing that. And the, the idea that no one that no one can die except by Allah's permission. In, if you read it in that context, in light of other things the Quran says, you would look at this and go, um, okay, the Jews said how we got them. But according to Islam, Allah can use people as instruments to further his purposes. And so as Allah saying, no, I, you think you overpowered me, but you're simply carrying out my plans and uh, Jesus is alive and I took him to paradise. That's the issue. So again, as far as the Quran verse is concerned, I would say that's given other verses in the Quran that is open to interpretation. So my personal view would be if that verse is open to interpretation, then you should probably go with the interpretation that doesn't portray your God as a cosmic trickster and deceiver. That, that would be a, that would be my view. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, AP? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's my thoughts. So this is a, you know what I find strangest in all of this? What? Have you noticed how many verses of the Quran Muslims are quite happy to reinterpret? <laughs> of course, absolutely. And then we get to this verse and this is the this is somehow the only verse in the Quran that you cannot reinterpret. Yeah. What if if you if you read verses like, you know, chapter 8 verse 17 and so on, before you read this verse and then you read it in context and so on, yeah, 4157 still does sound like it's denying the crucifixion. If you read it in the context of other things the Quran says, where it doesn't sound like the, where it sounds like Jesus died, and then you have these other verses where, you know, no, you can't die unless Allah gives you permission, and hey, it's not you killing them; it's Allah doing it through you. So when you take when you take all those things into account, it starts to look like there there's some room for reinterpretation here, and. It's for some reason, it's the only verse you're not allowed to reinterpret. Every other verse in the Quran, you can reinterpret. And you come up with 50 different meanings and Muslims have no problem with it, except this one verse. Nope. It has to mean Allah is a trickster who starts false religions for no reason. That's what it has to mean. And we can't, we can't accept any other interpretation. It is, it is very, it is really interesting that, um, as you point out, that this is such a, such a big problem like like they have to die on that hill here yeah weird one weird but, weird hill to die on. <laughs> a very weird hill to die on that in i this die case, on the hill of allah's deception dang it uh, no jesus was not crucified he was definitely not killed not none of that happened it's absolutely not true i will not change my mind on this allah tricked everybody I will not change my mind on this. Allah is a prankster. Allah is the best of pranksters. He does the best pranks. He creates the biggest false religion with the greatest prank. He's showing us how a prank is really done. And I stand by that. I am proud of that. I'm proud of Allah. It's weird. It's weird. When when you could really just like this, this scholar sit down and uh, look at it differently and look at it and say, hey, no, it doesn't make sense. Allah is our God is not a trickster. That's not what happens. That's not what the verse actually says. What the verse says is he did not really die. He was not really killed. He was raised. You know, you, mm -hmm. you don't deny it. Don't depict Allah as a as a liar, as a prankster. That's very that's very wild, wild. And I warn you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
Dawa over Dunya here says, uh, Allah says it was made to appear so. How does that mean Allah is the one who made it appear so? Yes, to be clear, Dawa over Dunya. We're not the ones saying, yes, if you just read the verse, it is not clear who's doing what. That's the point. The verse is hopelessly unclear, right? Who's doing what? You, uh, we already said, you don't read the verse and say, oh yeah, Allah took Judas and disguised him, made him look like Jesus, so and you don't get that. Hopeless. We're saying the standard Islamic view, the standard Islamic view is that Allah miraculously disguised someone. Again, either a volunteer, either a volunteer, someone volunteered, I'll do it, Jesus. I'll be crucified in your place. And Jesus, oh, I'm so scared of crucifixions. Uh, I'll do it. I'll do it for you in your place, Jesus. So you have the, the Muslim commentaries that portray Jesus as a, as a, as a coward who lets someone else die in his place. Com notice, completely reversing the gospel. Or you have this stuff about uh, Judas, <coughs> uh, Judas or the guard, and Allah miraculously disguises that person to make him die in Jesus' place. And there you at least say, okay, well, it was a person who deserved punishment. But notice the complete gospel reversal even there. Uh, the complete gospel reversal even there um, that you have... Uh, you have uh, in, in Christianity, you have the innocent Jesus dying on behalf of guilty sinners. And then the standard Islamic interpretation flips it and makes it, uh, makes it, no, the guilty Judas died on behalf of the innocent Jesus. Complete reversal of the gospel. Uh, we did have a comment here from, where is it? Dr. Khalil Andani? I have to, I have to say, I have to add quickly. Um, it says, uh, the, the, the actual wording in the verse is, so they did not kill him and they did not crucify him. And then it is, um, it was made to appear to them so. It doesn't even specify whether somebody else was placed in, in the, in the, instead of Jesus. It wasn't, uh, it's, not, it's not specified who did that and why it happened. All it says, it, all it says is uh, it appeared to them so, or it was made to appear to them so as such but in but in this case again it doesn't matter if allah is in this verse directly and explicitly said to be the one organizing this deception what matters is this is such a big issue it it starts christianity if you go by the quran's narrative it's it starts this corrupt version of christianity this is how it starts this is the catalyst and uh apparently Allah who plans things and who sends Jesus and who raises him uh, is part of this whole plot of making Jesus uh, apparently die on the cross but then saving him behind the scenes from the cross and then letting everyone fall into this uh, big giant deception and starting the biggest false religion in the world and that's on him yeah, it is like like uh, of all of all the various positions you could be glued to, why why that one? Why the one that makes Allah this cosmic uh, this yeah. cosmic trickster? Uh, but notice, I mean the, the 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 phrase in question there. So it was made to appear to them, or something like that. You can interpret that in a ton of different ways. What's that saying? That 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 someone else was made to appear like Jesus, and that's how Allah made it appear to them, or just hey, you you you. It appeared to you like you got the victory of, over Jesus. It appeared to you like you killed him. It appeared like it appeared to you like you refuted him or thwarted Allah. It was made to appear to you that way, but you didn't because Allah raised him up, so he's good to go, right? It's, it's notice it, it, that's what uh, that's what Sheikh Imran Hussein is actually getting right. It's like okay, there is this perfectly perfectly straightforward uh, alternative explanation. It doesn't sound like in the if you just look at the verse, it doesn't sound like that's what it's saying. But if you take everything else into account. Uh, I I don't know. It's weird that that Muslims aren't open to this interpretation. I did want to uh, uh, point out here this comment from Khalil Andani. Says David, we talking about this next week? Yes. Yeah. So yes, we're talking. I'm having a discussion with a Muslim scholar here, uh, Dr. Khalil Andani, next week on uh, on this issue. So we're going to be talking about the Quran's perspective on the crucifixion of Jesus. That'll be on uh, Cameron Bertuzzi's channel, Capturing Christianity. So that should be uh, interesting. And Oh, that boring um, okay yeah. one so. one more one more issue before we close out here one more issue before we close out ap uh, i i just mentioned that 
I just mentioned that it's weird that this is the verse. This verse where, again, if you go through the commentaries, almost every phrase in 4.157 is open to different interpretations. And yet, this is the one verse that you can't reinterpret. And if you go to the Tafsirs, they don't agree on much of anything. They don't agree on uh, on whether the substitution was voluntary or involuntary, or if it was involuntary, who was it? Or if it was voluntary, who was it? They disagree on almost everything. And somehow, you're, <laughs> this is the only verse of the Quran you're not allowed to reinterpret. So, so ju just think of, just uh, think of some examples here. And maybe you can bring up some on 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 science as an example. But I'm just thinking like we read the words in the Quran. Fight those who believe not in Allah. Say, what's that mean? Oh, it means only fight people in self-defense. Okay, so, so Allah gives this command and you say, ah, oh, what he really means is, and you have no problem reinterpreting that. Uh, if you have like 434, that if your wife gets out of line, you know, you, you, you warn her and then you banish her to a separate bed and then you beat her. What does it mean to beat her? Ah, it means tapping her with a toothbrush. Okay, well, that, that's not what it says. It doesn't really make sense, but you're 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 glad to interpret that in light of other things, right? Uh, you're 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 open to interpretation. If you think of uh, all the, I mean, all the times the Quran affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the Jewish and Christian scriptures, right? Seven one fifty seven says Jews and Christians still have the Torah and the Gospel. Uh, Five forty seven. In 540, I mean, even you go back a few verses earlier, 543, Allah tells the Jews they don't need Muhammad because they already have the Torah. 547, Allah tells Christians to judge by the gospel. And the next verse says why Allah wants different religious communities so that they can compete with each other in, in good works. He wants that, right? And somehow Muslims look at all of that and they say, ah, oh, what this is saying is everyone needs to just believe the Quran right now and throw out their, throw out their earlier scriptures. It's like... Allah says over and over and over again, like a beating drum, that he's affirming the scriptures that the Jews and Christians have. Muslims reinterpret all of that, what he's really telling you when he affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of your scriptures. What he's really saying is that he initially inspired them, but you all corrupted them, and now you all have to read the Quran. Exact opposite of what Allah says in the Quran. And they're happy to reinterpret all of that, no matter how clear... And then, as, as you've had plenty of experience in this AP, talking about these scientific issues, uh, can you think of any verses that seem to be saying one thing, like 4157 seems like it's saying something, but our Muslim friends are happy to reinterpret those verses? Can you think of anything like that? Yeah, can I think of anything? <laughs> I, mean, I made a video uh, of 60 scientific mistakes in the Quran where I listed uh, a lot of stuff. But I mean, you can think about... Um, different examples like for example quran chapter 36 verse 38 where it says the sun runs toward a stopping point and so it describes the sun uh, running through the sky toward a certain point and staying there which is also affirmed in the hadith where muhammad clearly describes the sun going to a a place where it prostrates and then asks for permission to rise again in the morning and allah says yeah go whatever and it rises and uh whenever this is brought up muslims um reinterpret this because obviously the if you read it as it is, it sounds completely idiotic and wrong with all the knowledge that we have nowadays about the natural world. So they are happy to reinterpret this in order for this to make sense. Uh, you look at different verses like, um, let's say the, the one about uh, Allah creating the stars as an adornment and uh, throwing them at rebellious devils. There are many wild inter interpretations of what that exactly means and how we are completely misunderstanding that. Uh, Muslims make a lot of interpretations on that. I've had different debates where they say that that actually uh, is in reference to how the objects in the universe move around and Allah precisely plant them and the jinns there are merely used as an allegory or something of that kind, where others like uh, Muhammad Hijab for example say well yeah i mean it's true the allah does pelt the jinns with stars and this is just something we cannot understand because it is beyond our comprehension it's a, a meta metaphysical matter <laughs> uh lots of it uh semen coming from between the backbone and ribs in quran chapter 86 verse 7 a very uh very infamous quran verse 
uh, which Muslims now try to reinterpret in different ways, where they say, well, if you if you look at the human body and turn it around, then it looks like where the semen comes from is somewhere between the backbone and ribs, so therefore it makes sense. Or or, or you, you take the Zakir Naik method and say uh, that it is formed um, during the formation of a human uh, you know, in, in the in the embryonic stage, or somewhere somewhere after that, uh, semen originates from a certain place that happens to correspond to where the you know, the backbone and the ribs would originate. Therefore, it which, actually which, makes sense. And which, which, yeah, which, which which by the way doesn't make that if you just had the Quran verse and you were saying that this is referring to embryonic development, right? Uh, that would be one thing, but Muhammad also said that that the entire uh, that all humanity was in the backbone of Adam, and Adam oh. Adam Adam didn't start off as a little embryo, so you can't say it refers to the embryo because God create God creates Adam fully fully grown. So if the if if they're still in his backbone, then it still comes out of the backbone there. And so it, it, anyway, point is it can't be talking about embryonic development, but there, that you know that won't stop Zucker Knight from interpreting it that way. Yeah, so can I can do anything, and of course, there's also one of the one of my favorites, which is that uh, Allah holds up the sky and prevents it from falling down on us uh, with His strong hands. Uh, it doesn't say with His strong hands. That's what I added because it sounds funny. But uh, so he, the Quran verse basically says uh, that Allah created everything and He spread the earth for us so that we may walk on it and grow things on it, and He also. Uh, holds the sky and prevents him it from falling down on us, which doesn't really make sense because the sky is not uh, is not an object or anything that could possibly fall down on us. And um, Muslim apologists, like those that responded to me when I made those videos, for example, said that this is actually obviously in reference to uh, how the atmosphere is held together around the earth and how you know if the if, if gravity somehow had a problem then the atmosphere would uh, disperse and move in such a way that we would uh, you know die and all that but none of that is in any way close to describing what the quran describes when it says he holds the sky so it doesn't fall down on you and so on i mean there, there are so many examples where where muslims are happy to interpret the the quran verses to make them make more sense because the obvious narrative as you read it there is nonsensical but in this case for some reason they want to die on that hill yeah so th that's kind of the uh that's the the takeaway to 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 the muslims who are watching um you know, we uh, we we've had our differences in the past. <laughs> we have our we have our disagreements, uh, but I mean, just completely, completely serious uh, here. And this would be my this would be my perspective from you know I might organize my thoughts more and so on before you know the discussion next week on on Cameron's channel. But my my real takeaway position is, if you have a if you have a Quran verse that is open to multiple interpretations especially when you consider what the rest of the Quran says, you should probably go with the interpretation that doesn't portray your God as this as this cosmic trickster who deceives people for no reason. So uh, it, it's to the point. Let me go ahead and say this. Let me go ahead and say this here. If by some weird series of events, I were to become a Muslim at some point, right? In other words, if, if, if someone, if the, if, if the Da'is were to convince me, if they were to, uh, if they were to insult me into <laughs> agreeing with them, because that seems to be the strategy, we'll just insult you until you agree with us. If they were somehow to insult me into submission, I said, you know what? Gosh, so many insults, so many death threats. I have to believe that this is the true religion. And I were to convert Based on what I know about the based on what I know about the Quran affirming the scriptures of the Jews and Christians, and based on what I know about what the Quran says in four one fifty seven, and um, how the at least the interpretations of that were influenced by heretical Christian sources. Knowing all of that, if I were to convert to Islam, this is what I would conclude. I would conclude. 4.157 has been misinterpreted by Muslims because the Quran is affirming earlier scriptures, which clearly, clearly claim that Jesus died by crucifixion. That's also a fact of history. And the only way around it is to portray God as a deceiver. I'm not going to do that. And therefore, I'm going to conclude that 4.157 is not denying the crucifixion. 
And as far as other things like the deity of Christ and so on, I would have to say, okay, the Quran is affirming your earlier scriptures, but you must be, you must somehow be misinterpreting those passages. Uh, if you're concluding that Jesus is God, you have to be misinterpreting those. And you would have to say things like, okay, Jesus obviously wasn't dying for the sins of others. So he was dying like, you know, like other prophets have died. Uh, but I, I, even as a Muslim, I would, I would have a pro, I would have a massive problem with the standard Islamic narrative. I would say, I can't, I can't accept that. I can't accept that position. Um, so I would, th this was all to just encourage, uh, those of you who are watching of all the verses of all the verses that you are unwilling to reinterpret in the Quran. How is this, how is this a very ambiguous, very confusing verse that at least on the standard interpretation portrays God as a deceiver. And you don't have to, you are not glued to that. You do not have to agree with that interpretation. Why would you demand to stick to that interpretation when you're so completely confident in reinterpreting all the other verses in the Quran. It's so weird. That's so weird to me. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, um, if I, for some reason, for some very, very strange, extremely weird miracle, somehow converted to Islam again, in some weird fantasy world, I would probably have to conclude that the Quran is not the direct, unchangeable word of Allah, but that it is somehow, you know, a different uh, guide that went through channels and that is just for for us written by fallible humans and not of an infallible nature. Because even if I somehow converted to Islam, it would be very hard for me to agree that such a terrible book is actually uh, written by an almighty uh, by the almighty creator. But I also I would also say that's very far fetched because I don't I mean, not even a miracle could make me believe in Islam at this point ever. Yeah. Now you're starting to sound like Richard Dawkins. Nothing will make me believe. You can never you can never correct anything I believe. Ha -ha! <laughs> you see. Yeah. You see. Um yeah. hey, here's another example. Uh so this is uh Isa eighty seven here. This is this is from earlier when we were mentioning uh when I responded to a comment by uh Dawa over Dunya. But Isa here said Dawa over Dunya tried saying that Thomas was simply in shock when he called Jesus my God. So uh if anyone is new to this. I'm 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 not bringing this up just to just to respond to Dawa over Dunya. This is a this is another point about what we're saying. In so in the Gospel of John, Jesus post resurrection appears to Thomas, and Thomas says, "My Lord and my God." And so it looks like Dawa over Dunya <laughs> is saying that Thomas just went into shock and said, "Oh my God!" Like someone in America would say, right? "Oh my God!" Not realizing Dawa over Dunya. That's something that people say today. That is not something Jews say. Jews would regard that as taking the Lord's name in vain. They didn't shout yeah. out, oh my God. They didn't say oh, that. Oh, MG. Yeah, they did that was not that's not a Jewish <laughs> saying. Right? They they had a bit they had a bit more reverence for 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 calling people God and Lord uh than that. But anyway, the reason I wanted to bring that up was not to was not to even even correct the point. The point here is notice. You're perfectly willing to to reinterpret what someone is saying to bring it in line with your beliefs. Well, you know, Thomas couldn't be calling Jesus God there, so he must be saying something. You're perfectly willing to reinterpret things like that. Why not a verse that is eminently open to reinterpretation, 4157? There has always, always, always been a minority Muslim view, even among scholars, that this verse is not denying the crucifixion of Jesus, that there's actually... It's saying something much deeper about people not being able to get the victory over Allah. And even if you think you have, Allah is simply raising people. And so they're safe. And so uh, there's always been this alternative explanation. And so why not go with it here? It really looks like you're just you. You just like being on the on the opposite end of a Christian doctrine. That, that's how that's what it looks like. It's also very strange. Um, I, I did this. I asked the same thing to Sajid Lippin when he. Um when he had it back and forth with me about uh, Jesus in the Gospels and the Quran, uh, where he kept, where he said his position was, um, which is not the most popular one, his position was that the Gospels that we have today are, you know, preserved and are uh, as they were revealed by Allah, but that they are nowadays translated and read in a corrupt Christian light. But he was he, he was sticking to the idea that they are authentic Gospels. And for some reason, he was trying to argue that things in the Gospel of John 
are um, you know taken out of context or wrong, and that the Gospel of John actually makes perfect sense, and that uh, Jesus is not divine and not the Son of God, according to the Gospel of John. And I, I just thought, why in the world would you ever attempt to <laughs> recognize the Gospel of John from an Islamic point of view mm -hmm. as an authentic scripture by Allah, and then somehow try to play with it and twist it? I mean, every line in that in that in that Gospel refutes Islam. <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, that's just the position that uh, Allah has put people in. All right, we're gonna close out here in a second. Um, someone get a someone uh, someone get a, a dollar super chat ready. Someone just put a put a dollar in the super chat because uh, <laughs> earlier. <laughs> oh, there there we go. <laughs> uh, earlier, <laughs> when people were. When people were uh, putting in super chats, I was thinking, "Oh, they're making it rain! They're making it rain!" And anyway, I was thinking we need a uh, we need a stripper, ladies and gentlemen. Since people are making it, <laughs> since people are making it rain, we need a stripper. Now, can anyone think? Can anyone think of uh, some part time stripper who'd who'd be happy to volunteer here for us? Since I know the answer immediately, but I would like the the chat to contribute to this. So, so can anyone think? <laughs> Can anyone come up with a part-time stripper that we we might want to make dance for us? We might want to make dance for us when they make it rain. <laughs> anyone? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Ready. Since they made it rain. <laughs> 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 Classic. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's good. Uh, <laughs> you should use it every single time. Now yeah, we should we should do that. And we should, I, I don't think I want to do that every single super <laughs> chat, but uh <laughs> I might want to use it every show. Every show when we get some super chats. Uh Hyperdoc oh, said, I'll strip if you answer that person question from earlier. Uh what question from earlier? <laughs> we don't want. Keep in mind, we don't want you to strip hyperdocs. But Hi, hyperdocs misunderstood the <laughs> misunderstood the topic here and thinks I think we're looking for strippers. But no, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> we're really we're really looking for strippers, everyone. We really want them. <laughs> we already got a stripper. Part we time have... part time stripper, Mohammed Hijab. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we had. Uh... So how many lies are there in the Quran and which one is the most obvious and how much uh, these interpretations differ uh, or differ from uh, some centuries ago? Yeah, this is uh, th there are lots of different interpretations of this verse because there are lots of uh, there are lots of things in the verse that are confusing. And so, yep, just uh, just an ongoing issue. And notice this is a situation. This is a situation where we're trying to help. I'm, I'm actually legitimately trying to help here. I I think you should be open to other interpretations of 4157 in light of the historical evidence, in light of what your theology requires if you go with certain interpretations. And even look at look at scholars like Sheikh Imran Hussein, who uh, guys, you 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 are you are believing in some really weird stuff here. You need to you need to stop. And I agree, you need to you need to stop with the uh, stop stop calling God a cosmic deceiver. Stop it. Stop it. Get some help. You should All play right. that, that video. You know that video by uh, who's that? Is, that? is that Michael Jordan? Yeah, the Michael Jordan uh, video where he says, "Stop it! Get some help." Uh, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, that's what we wanted to cover here. Uh, we we were AP. We were going to cover a video, which I think is going to be the the most epic live stream in history on your channel yesterday. Uh, things didn't work out. Because yeah. you can't, you can never trust an atheist to never to be reliable with anything. But uh, unless They're something booking. goes, unless something goes horribly wrong, we'll we'll get back to that on AP's channel this coming Saturday. So guys, you don't want to miss this. I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. I think this is going to be one of the most epic live streams in history. Very yes. very powerful. So you want to check that out. Uh, that will be happening on my channel. We on the weekend, yes. And 
gonna be pretty, 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 pretty awesome. You'll be ashamed of yourself forever if you miss it. So keep that in mind when you're deciding what to do good. next pretty Saturday. Good. All right, everyone. Pretty, uh, pretty good. Yeah. Any any last final concluding thought for everyone, AP? Uh, all right, all right, all right. No, um, <laughs> my final uh, thoughts are always, none of this makes sense. Stay away from Islam. And uh, I'll just say, uh, in addition to that, stop accusing God of being a cosmic deceiver. Get a get a get a better theology. Hope that helps. Stop it. Get some help. Get some help. <laughs>